వెళ్ళినప్పుడు ఆ డ్రింకింగ్ వాటర్ ఏదైతే ఉన్నదో మేము చేసేదిగా ఈ వాటర్ సరిగా ఈయనతో ప్రాబ్లం ఉంది అసలు ఎంత మందులు వాడినా కానీ తగ్గుతలేదు అసలు లాస్ట్కు మేము సంపాదించిన సొమ్మునంతా హాస్పిటల్ల పాలు పెట్టవలసిన పరిస్థితి అనేది అవుతున్నది దీని వల్లనే ఈ కారణంగానే దీని కారణాలు ఎవరు We're in the outskirts of Hyderabad in India and behind me is one of the many waterways that's being polluted by the pharmaceutical industry. India is one of the largest exporters of generic drugs in the world and the United States is its number one customer. India's pharmaceutical industry is only continuing to grow with profits expected to hit 55 billion in the next 5 years. One of its main drivers is an increased global consumption of antibiotics. But manufacturing these drugs also results in hazardous waste. Here in Hyderabad, the epicenter of this boom, pharmaceutical pollution is dumped into the river, endangering nearby communities. In a village downstream from the pharma capital, we met the sheriff of Adulabad, who told us how the industry is contaminating the waterways. So what is this foam over here? అంటే నాచారం జీడిమెట్ల బాల్నగర్ హైదరాబాద్ ఇండస్ట్రియల్ నుంచి కాకుండా అదేవిధంగా పట్టంచెరు కెమికల్ వాటర్ రావడంతో ఈ విధంగా వచ్చినట్టుగైతే ఇట్లా ఈ రెడ్ సాయిల్ ఏదైతే ఉన్నదో ఇప్పుడు ఇదంతా కూడా చూసుకుంటూ వచ్చినట్టుగైతే ఇప్పుడు అగ్గిపుల్ల ముట్టి చేసేసి ఇదంతా కూడా బర్న్ అవుతుంటుంది ఇది వెళ్ళినప్పుడు ఆ డ్రింకింగ్ వాటర్ ఏదైతే ఉన్నదో మేము చేసేది ఈ వాటర్ The sheriff told us that the water has brought strange illnesses to the community. While walking along the river, we bumped into a rice farmer who wanted to show us the painful skin disease he's developed because of the water he uses to irrigate his fields. Go ee vidhanga nanu nadiga mottham ee charma vyadhulu nanu nadiga ee vidhanga ee avutunna ga ee vanni kada. So is this from the water? Ee ne neeru. It seemed that everywhere we turned, people were suffering from one sickness or another with no relief in sight. How long has your son been sick? Four years ago, he was sick. He was sick and he was sick. He was sick and he was sick. He was sick and he was sick. There was no problem. He was sick and he was sick. 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 And as this woman explained, they weren't getting any answers. Not even the doctors knew why people were getting sick. No matter how many medicines they took, nothing was working. Manasiki, ye rogalu, doctor lakan tu patat ledu. Aga visham chukane yu rozu, musi parwa ka pranthan ki, atu vaipuna, itu vaipuna. Aga Pfizer nilu, meem daavutu namme yu rozu. Chemicals nil daavutu namme. Can you describe to me how you found out that the water was polluted? How did it change? First time, ఎదులాబాద్ లక్ష్మీనారాయణ చెరువు ఏదైతే ఉన్నదో అది ఫైవ్ ఫోర్ ఫోర్ హండ్రెడ్ అండ్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఎకర్స్ లేక్ ఇక్కడ మార్చ్ టూ థౌజండ్లో చేపలు మొత్తం చనిపోవడం కూడా జరిగింది అప్పుడు దాంట్లో అసలు చనిపోవడానికి కారణాలు ఏంటిది అని అనేది మేము నేను పర్సనల్గా మేము అంటే పరిస్థితులను బట్టి ఈ ఫార్మా కంపెనీస్ ఇండస్ట్రియల్ కెమికల్ వేటర్ ఏదైతే ఉన్నదో దాన్ని రావడంతో కూడా తప్పని పరిస్థితులలో గత్యంతరం లేక ఖచ్చితంగా త్రాగునీరు కోసము సాగునీరు కోసము ఈ రెండిటికి వాడుకునేది దీని కారణాలు ఎవరు లాస్ట్కు మేము సంపాదించిన సొమ్మునంతా హాస్పిటల్ల పాలు పెట్టవలసిన పరిస్థితి అనేది అవుతున్నది దీనివల్లనే ఈ కారణంగానే I mean, of course, he's upset. This is sort of the ultimate irony. These pharmaceutical factories are producing medicines to treat people around the world, but it's polluting and making people sick over here.
What's worse is, many in the medical community have begun to fear that these diseases could be so hard to treat because there may not be a drug to treat them at all. In India, there has been a rise in disease-causing bacteria that are resistant to multiple types of antibiotics, making treatment difficult to impossible. These bacteria are referred to in the media as superbugs. Water supplies in New Delhi are infested with a highly resistant bug hazardous to human health. A new study shows the spread of a gene called NDM1 can turn almost any type of bacteria into a powerful superbug that can't be treated with even the strongest of antibiotics. In 2010, news outlets around the world began reporting on a new superbug discovered in India that was immune to even the most powerful line of conventional antibiotics. Although there isn't much public awareness on the ground, medical professionals are coming face to face with the rising epidemic. Dr. Kayur Mehta works in the ICU of the Lotus Children's Hospital, dealing with many of its worst cases. So tell me how big of an issue antibiotic resistance is. So antibiotic resistance is now no longer a phenomenon which is deemed to happen in the future. It is something which is very much ongoing. How many cases would you say a week do you get of patients coming in with some kind of antibiotic resistance? I would say uh, what we see at the hospital is probably the tip of the iceberg. And uh, we probably may be seeing around 20 cases a week. So it is extremely important to go to the source of the problem and prevent it from leading to the development of further superbugs. The source of superbugs has typically been identified as the personal misuse of antibiotics or the consumption of antibiotic-treated meat. Only recently have scientists begun to examine the possibility that pharmaceutical waste could contribute to antibiotic resistance. Waste from pharmaceutical factories is first sent to an effluent treatment plant to ensure it's safe before being discharged into waterways. We decide to visit one to take a look at their process. This is our treated wastewater. It meets all surface discharge standards, which is stipulated by the Minister of Forest and Environment and our State Pollution Control Board. So it's free of all contaminants, yes. everything yes. is yes. gone? Yes. As per the standards we are meeting. It seems a problem has less to do with meeting standards and more to do with the standards themselves. For example, with the pharmaceutical industry, there has been problems with finding antibiotics. Do you test for antibiotics at all? We are, we are all those parameters we are not analyzing also. What is the standard stipulated inlet, outlet, that all we are checking it. And we are meeting it. So what he's saying is, the effluent treatment plant doesn't check for levels of antibiotics in the water because they don't have to. Which means there's nothing to stop high doses of antibiotics from being dumped into local waterways, killing off bacteria until only the strongest and most resistant are left, making it a perfect breeding ground for superbugs. Since there's little official data on the levels of antibiotics in the water, we decided to try and test for ourselves. Anil Dayakar, a local environmental activist, agreed to meet us to collect samples. It's really hard to describe the way that this smells. It's, it kind of leaves this sour taste in your yeah. mouth. Is it what it usually smells like coming off of a Yeah, it smells like this only. So it's a smell of the drugs and, uh, yeah, bulk dress, basically. The wastewater is untreated for antibiotics. Yes. So this could have very, very high levels in it. Yeah, very high levels. That which you will know now after testing in the labs. Careful. After getting the samples, Anil showed us where the water from that stream is flowing. This looks worse than over yeah. there. Yeah, so this is the open well. The, all the industries, they came together, they constructed this open well, just for the sake of storing the flames here. And this has no regulation at all, right? This is just, there's trash in it, there's sand, they just leave it. That's all. 
these effluents were supposed to be carried to the treatment plant. And they were to be collected at the production stage itself, from there to the treatment plant. And instead of coming down like this uh, illegally. The outfall from this well goes to waterways in the villages downstream, including the one we visited. It was difficult finding a lab that would agree to test our samples. The first lab refused as soon as they found out what it was for, alluding to industry interests they didn't want to anger. So we took it to another lab, and they confirmed what we'd suspected, that our samples contained unsafe levels of a powerful antibiotic. But we wanted to be sure, so we reached out to Joachim Larsen, a Swedish scientist who was part of a team that did their own testing in the same area. Unfortunately, due to the limitations of labs in India, Joaquim told us it was almost impossible to produce reliable results and ruled ours inconclusive, so instead offered to share his own findings. So you did some sampling in the same area that we went to a couple years prior to when we visited. What were some of the things that you found from your sampling? We have found a, a lot of pharmaceuticals. Some pharmaceuticals were higher in the water than in the blood of a patient that takes uh, medication. So in the study we published last year, we were able to show that bacteria from a highly polluted lake could transfer resistance to E. coli bacteria. We've found that the bacteria there have developed new forms of resistance, uh, and that is sort of exemplifies the, the risk scenario that we are worried about, that the environmental bacteria will transfer resistance to human pathogens. What is the appropriate response to finding out something like this? Well, I would think the first thing would be to regulate it, to say that this cannot uh, go on. But surprisingly, it's still not regulated because governments have not realized, the legislator has not realized that this can be a problem. A scary thing with antibiotic resistance is that it basically just needs to emerge once, at one time, one place on our planet. Then we have open Pandora's box and we can't close it again. Pandora's box may have already been opened. Reports are emerging of a new superbug gene that is highly resistant to even the most powerful antibiotics. According to the World Health Organization, if drastic measures aren't taken to address antibiotic resistance, by 2050 there will be more people dying from superbugs than there are currently dying from cancer. In a matter of time, if nothing is done to regulate the dumping of antibiotics into the water, the waterborne problem of an Indian village could become a global disaster. And the very act of making these drugs could ultimately make us much sicker than we ever imagined.